Okay, let's try some coding examples in mumps. Um, let's do some string manipulation. I downloaded a copy of James Joyce's no, uh, short story entitled The Dead. Now, actually, a movie made of it by um, John Huston. It was his last film. It's very good. But anyway, um, it looks like this. Uh, it's uh, e Each paragraph is a single sentence, and you can see more or less where the paragraphs end and so forth. It's got a lot of punctuation in it. And uh, anyway, it's about 15,000 lines long. Um, I think it's about 15,000 words. It's 682 lines, I believe. Um, Let's see. I'll do a WC on it. WC, uh, and it's 468 lines long, and it's 15,707 uh, words. Uh, it's one of the longer uh, short stories he did in the series called The Dubliners. Anyway, what I want to do is find out the word usage in it. Word usage is one thing we look at when we get into information retrieval because... When words occur in a document at a different frequency than would be expected under normal circumstances, that often tells us something about the content of the document. So I want a word frequency list. And I don't want a lot of punctuation. And I don't want a lot of uh, upper and lower case. Well, let's start off. First of all, we want to be able to read it in and write it out, something like that. So I will um, start with a mumps program. We'll call it read.mumps. It's going to be a reading read the thing in um pound sign whoops input note pound sign um, um bang uh, slash usr slash bin slash mumps that um gets me access to my uh, interpreter uh, yours will be different probably if you're using one of the other systems so we want to we want to read it in so let's uh, open the file um open to unit number one now opening is it opens and closes and so forth are very system specific yours may not look like this in this case we're opening unit number one and we give it the file name dot text um, and i use old indicating it it exists new would mean i'm creating it and it would destroy the previous contents um, i should check to see if it worked um, if not dollar sign test uh, dollar sign test will be true if it worked. If it's false, it means it didn't work. Uh, for some reason, the file didn't open. I would write out a message. Um, whoops. Um, no such file or something like that. Um, quote, comma, bang, exclamation point, new line character, and I'd halt. Okay? So if we don't get the file, we will halt. Well, let's just try reading it in. For dot space space, two spaces forever, do... Uh, and then I have two spaces here. Um, if um, f uh, is in equals one, um, quit. Okay, I should probably put an initial value of f there uh, equal to zero. That's going to be a semaphore indicating whether or not the, um, uh, we're out of input. Uh, let's see, dot re, oh, whoops, I have to have to use, use one. That switches us to that unit. Um, dot read uh, line I'll call it line you can call it anything you want uh, test to see if we're out of input if not dollar sign test because read sets dollar sign test um, so that means if, if, if dollar sign test is um, false means we didn't read the line means we're out of input um, we want to uh, get out of here so we will say set f equal to 1 um, and um, quit that will take us back up to the loop, and in each iteration of the loop, we test the CFF is equal to 1. Now it will be 1, and the um, loop will quit. Okay, so um, we did um, we did read. If we were down at this line, we did read something in. Uh, let's just write it out to see if this all works before we move on. Write line with a new line character. The new line character that was in the line uh, on on the file is actually lost during input. So there we have a program that will read it in and write it out and uh, quit when it runs out of input. At least we hope that's what it is. Write it out. Um, chmod uh, user plus x star dot mumps. That anything with the dot mumps is now executable in this directory. Um, there's quite a bit of stuff in this directory, but all the mumps files, of course, I want to make them executable. You must make it executable in my system before you can actually run it. So if I say read.mumps, 
it did it. It um, didn't. It flashed by very quickly. You probably didn't see it, but um, uh, let me uh, r run the output of it into more. So we'll see it a page at a time. I'm hitting spacebar, and when you hit a spacebar, you get the next page and so forth. So yes, it is reading the file in. I hit Q to get out of. Um, well, I guess I ran out of it just as I was about to hit Q. All right, so we go back in there, and what do we want to do? Well, a couple of things we want to do. Um, one is we want to get rid of punctuation. Um, so if I say set line equal to dollar sign translate um, line, comma, uh, quote. Now we need the punctuation, comma, period, colon, semicolon, single quote, double quote. Notice it's two. Um, square brackets, squiggly brackets, um, now the uppercase, uh, all of these guys going across the top here, um, minus sign, underscore, um, plus, minus, backslash, I don't know if I've got them all, but I've got a lot of them there anyway. So if I find any one of those, I want it to be replaced with nothing. Okay, so that should, anytime it finds any one of those items in the quoted list, and notice the, quote, the double quote is in there, it's two double quotes next to one another in order to embed it within a quoted string, it will replace it with nothing. So let's see if that worked. Um, so I just run it again. And if you look there, you see, I don't see any uh, punctuation. I see a lot of extra blanks because where they were, it, um, I guess, a I to replace them with blank, yes. Um, they're missing. Um, uh, all right. So uh, the next thing is, do I want? Uh, I would. I would like to get rid of the extra blanks. Uh, my system is putting blanks in. I'm not sure that's in the standard. Actually, I have a function um, called uh, dollar sign z blanks. Um, dollar sign z blanks z functions are of course um, uh, system specific what it does is it uh, takes adjacent blanks if, if you see two blanks it replaces them with one it sees three blanks it replaces them with one uh, it's handy sometimes to get rid of stuff so I'm hitting up arrow to get to previous um, thing and you can see it's much denser now because the extra blanks are gone okay um, Next thing we would want to do is um, make sure everything is um, uh, to convert all the uppercase to lowercase. So set line equal to uh, dollar sign translate. Uh, actually, mine doesn't check spelling, so the B wouldn't have hurt. Um, uh, it only looks at the, the necessary first characters to determine whether or not it's the function. Speeds things up. Uh, quote. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay, I think I got them all. And now make sure I get them the correct order, comma. Uh, quote, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Oh, um, y, Z. I hope I got them all in the right order. I usually have to sing it. Uh, anyway, um, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, K, L, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And check the J, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. If, if they're out of order, you're going to get substitutions. It may not be really all that reasonable. Uh, let's see what happens when if I try running it. Um, looks okay. I don't, um, I see everything seems to have gone to lowercase. I don't see any really weird spelling. So now we've got it in lowercase. Um, okay. Um, in terms of words, um, extracting words from this line, um, we have been, um, we've been writing out the line as such, but now I want to actually, um, let's get rid of that there. Um, and let's, um, Let's, let's say we're going to write words out. Um, so we're going to, on this line, uh, 
before do and um, we'll have to have another semaphore here if um, I use a command called break but I, it's not in it's in the standard but it, it doesn't have the same meaning as I have so I'll avoid it whoops I have to have two blanks after the do if um, uh, um, f1 um, equals uh, one quit and I'll need the semaphore up here uh, dot set f1 equal to zero and we go in here um, well let's see I'm actually going to go across the line so when I when I say I equals um, equals one by one no upper limit um, and now I don't want two blanks there so I do want two blanks after the do because it has no argument I don't want two blanks after the argument before because there obviously is an argument um, what I'm going to do is go across the line two dots now we're in an embedded um, embedded block uh, I want to say I want to extract the words I'll say set um, word um, equal to dollar sign piece of line uh, delimited by a blank because you know we only got one blanks in there between everything uh, but delimited by a blank and I want the ith word okay as I increments uh, so I'll ask for the first word second word third word as delimited by um, uh, by a blank uh, if word equals empty um, set f1 equal to 1 and quit because um, we ran out of words all right we would uh, probably want well it would just leave, we'll worry about that later something else done um, whoops it should be if um, okay uh, now I've got the word uh, just write it out um, and uh, with a blank after it if you want uh, now here I would like to um, uh, now now I'm back at the outer level okay uh, whoops that was a tab tabs are fine uh, but I'm using blanks just at the start I would write a new line character so I wrote all these words continuously and now I'm going to write a new line character when I'm back on the outside. Um, so I'm getting rid of extra blank lines that got in there. So um, and now I'm ready to go. So what do we do? We read the line in. We check to see if we ran out of lines. Uh, we switch to unit number five. Notice we had unit number f one first. Then we switch to five, which is the standard output. Uh, we remove the punctuation. We remove the extra blanks. We convert to lowercase, and now we go across the li cross line, extracting words based on blanks as the separator. All right. Um, let's see if it works. Pressing my luck here. Um, well, yes, it did. Um, the uh, and. Um, in, and you can see that you see the words there it doesn't look intensely different than it did before because um, basically we're getting the same thing where um, we're writing out uh, the words individually rather than as a whole line so there may be some slight spacing and so forth differences okay um, let's go back in what else don't we want um, well in the case of um, in case of words uh, for vocabulary um, if the length of the word um, uh, is less than four three character words and less are usually where you draw the line you can pick other lines we don't want to index one character words um, and, and two character words um, even three character words are not all that meaningful usually so if the word length of word is less than um, four I'll quit so we now we won't see words that are one two and three uh, characters long uh, and we'll try running that again and uh yeah you see there are no uh short words here the short words are all um gone away okay it's wrapping around the edge there that's why you're seeing the regular thing so all right um so now i've got words uh what do i want to do i want to create a global array that contains these words and i want to keep count of each time uh, a word goes in there so I will say here I've got the word at this point here I will say I've written it out actually at this point so I'll say um, if dollar sign data of up arrow um, let's call it dict for dictionary um, um, of word uh, 
if it exists is what I'm saying here. In other words, if, if, this, if, if this element of the global array exists, there's an element of the global array um, with the index value of whatever is in Word exists, the value of dollar sign data will be one, all right, because it's only going to be a single level um, a vector. It's not going to be a matrix. So it can't be more than, it'll either be zero or one in this case. Um, if it is a one, we want to say set up arrow dict of um, uh, word uh, equal to up arrow dict of word uh, plus one. So in other words, the value in uh, dict is incremented. Um, otherwise, and this is the case where the else would uh, work, two blanks after an else, it takes no argument, um, because the else is going to be dependent on what happened in the previous if. The previous predicate, if it failed, dollar sign test is false. In other words, if, d if dict sub word does not exist, um, the remainder of the if is not executed. It's false. The predicate's false, so we fall through. When we hit the else, the dollar sign test is false. So otherwise, in other words, if it doesn't exist, we make it exist. Set up arrow um, dict of word equal to zero. That's how we initialize it. So um, in all the other cases, it does exist, and we're incrementing. Whoops! I want to make it one because it does, one occurrence has it has happened, not zero. All right, so beyond that, we uh, increment. Let's see if it works. Um, in my system here, we've got other things. Um, uh, I'm, I'm um, star dot dat. Uh, that's the global arrays. Uh, in, in, I'm just using the natives, uh, native version here. So I, um, that's one way of getting rid of the entire database. I, there's nothing in it at the moment, so I got rid of it. Uh, key dot dat and data dot dat are the files that contain the database in my system. Okay. So we run it again, um, and it's and it's working. Stuff, 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 stuff. Okay, um, it ran all the way down to the end. Um, let's uh, let's look, for example, at um, uh, star dot dat, and you see this stuff in them. There's 132 k's in key dot dat, and there's 12 k in data dot dat. In my system, when you store a um, an array reference, it goes into key.dat, and the value stored goes into data.dat. Okay, well, the only other thing we want to do is print it out. Um, so when the program's in entirely done, rather than just quitting, let me put an extra blank there. Uh, first of all, let's close unit number one, although it's technically not necessary. It's only input. <coughs> it's probably a good idea to get in the habit of doing that. So I would say, um, I would say um, set... Um, w equal to the empty string and I would say for do um, if um, f equals um, one quit um, actually there's I forget back to f equal to zero to start it off so my semaphore um, dot um, set w equal to dollar sign order of up arrow dict sub w in other words W is empty string, so we should get the first value of the word uh, W in the vector. Uh, and then, um, oops, I left off the blank there. Um, um, if W equals the empty string, means we're done. Um, uh, set F equal to 1 and quit. Okay, and that'll cause the upper loop, the outer loop to uh, finish. Otherwise, uh, we want to um, we want to write it out. Um, so we will um, we have a problem here actually. Um, the if, if, let me go back up here a little bit and um, right here when you read a line at the very end, you were reading from unit number one. If it failed, you were you quit and we ended up down here. Unit number one is still active. So I should, I should have put in here, it's, it's easy way to get tripped up here, um, use five, because one at this point is still active by definition. That's how you got here. You attempted to read from unit number one and it failed. That didn't close unit number one. And it didn't change the use. Um, so anyway, a um, little extra blank there, make it a little clearer. Okay, down here, uh, so I am in unit number five now, and, uh, which is the standard output on mine. It may vary on yours. All right, so I want to write out... Um, the word, um, 
and the count. I put a blank after the word and the count. The count is in dict sub w and a new line character. Okay, so I'll get the word and it'll be alphabetic, of course, and I'll get the count, the number of times that word occurred. Okay, and we go back up here. Well, I should have got, gotten rid of them more. See them? Um, um, some of these, I don't know what A-U-G-H-R-A-M is supposed to be. It's got eight there. Aunt is in there 204 times. There's a bunch of aunts in this. Uh, but you see, there's the words, and there's the frequency of, um, of occurrence of the words as we're going along. So there you are. Um, uh, the, there's the program. It wasn't that hard to write. You have to think about a few things. As you know, like we're gonna, I would go through here and double check. I've got all the, con I've got all the punctuation removed, and I've got any uh, any additional items uh, like numbers. I didn't pull numbers from here, and there's no reason to have numbers. You really don't want to index the uh, number of times numbers occur. But anyway, um, that would give me a table of um, words and the and the uh, frequency of the words.